What's up, party people? It's me, Tito Puente Jr., and you're listening to the Sugar Hill Gang Podcast right here. Wepa! <laughs> What's up, world? What's up? What's up, world? This is the Sugar Hill Gang Podcast, and I'm your host, the Master G, and I'm doing this show with my host brothers and my peoples in the struggles. I'm talking about my man, Tick, 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 Hen Diggity. Say what's up, Hen Diggity. What's up, world? What's up? Black History <laughs> Month. No doubt. I'm a man. I'm my man, my man, my man's in there. Give it up, D. What's up, T Dynasty? What's happening? What's up, Boricua? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I'm gonna make sure I do this because I because I can't help it. I'm gonna shout out my brother Wonder Mike. So Mike is always here in spirit and always oh, here. Oh yeah, in our no hearts. question. Yeah, yeah. And no of question. course, Big Wonder, ladies and gentlemen, uh. we have the descendant of royalty in our presence. Yes. Oh my goodness, the crown ladies prince. and gentlemen, put your hands together uh-huh. for the man. The, the myth, no. The truth, yes. Tito Puente Jr., give it up for him. Welcome to the show, Tito Puente. What up, Tito? What up, brother? What up, brother? Yeah. Look at that cowbell. Look at that cowbell. More cowbell. Yeah. More cowbell. <laughs> yeah. That's serious. Yeah, my hey, wife when my wife don't let me bring the timbales in the house, so I gotta use the cowbell. <laughs> that's my dinner. That's, that, that, that's the dinner bell. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Yay, Tito, man. We got we got this is this is a good this is this is a labor of love show. This one in particular, because uh, as you know, man, you know your dad was very near and dear to me and to us. You know, uh, uh, um, you know. Shout out to, to 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 our producer Sylvia. She actually turned me on to him, and then once I was turned on to him, I understood the whole thing. So, um, you know, that's the premise of what's happening. You know, the reason why we're doing this is because you, you of course, you know, you tell. You, well, I'm gonna let you do it. You you talk about your dad. Tell everybody who your dad is for the listeners right. and the viewers. Well, G and friends, I want to thank you guys for inviting me on this podcast. I happen to Absolutely. be a Sugar Hill fan. A Sugar Hill fan. Since its inception, I was Thank probably you. about maybe nine years old in the 1970 and 1979 to 78, 79. So, yep. uh, but I'm truly honored to be on this podcast with you guys. And of course, those who might not know who Tito Puente was, he was a legendary Mambo King, Latin yes. ambassador of Latin music worldwide, uh, born and raised yes. in New York City in Spanish Harlem, uh, yes. and created a whole Mambo Latin jazz sound from the 1950s all the way to his uh, 50 year illustrious career, all the way to his passing in May 31st of 2000. Mm. An incredible soul, seven-time Grammy Award winner, 14 yes. nominations, star of the Hollywood Walk of Fame, uh, suspect on The Simpsons, Mambo King's The Movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I could go on and on about right. the accolades of Tito Puente, but if you haven't, just Google him and you'll see the most amazing timbale percussion player that ever lived, and he still will, still remains in all of our hearts, especially in the Latin music world, in the music world, 20 years after his passing. So yes. that, that's yes, who he man. was. Amazing, yes. amazing person. And and so, yeah, so so here's the deal. Like, uh, and I'll just go ahead and tell our quick little history. Uh, you know, like you said, 79, we we were, you know, hotter than fish grease. You know, Rapper's Delight was already blaring across the world and we were touring. And so now it was time to do an album. You know, it was like, okay. We're gonna get in the studio and we're gonna do it now. What songs are we gonna do? So we 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 went with the same kind of formula from Rapper's Delight with using you know the break beat, which was the you know the good time situation. So we went to the next record to record what we what, what we were gonna record. So it was a song called Catch a Groove that was a it was a small break beat, and uh, so we get in there and we 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 got the track and we, you know it's laid out and I'm a novice to the studio and. So Sylvia, God rest her soul, Sylvia, she says, you know, we need something on this. We need something really fly on this, this track, you know, blah, 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 blah. Because she was really just getting exposed to break beats too. So it was like bringing the streets into the studio, into the world of recorded music. And she heard, she said, I hear, I hear like a, a percussion on these breaks and da, 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 da. And she says, I know exactly who to call. So she's like, I'm gonna call Tito Puente. I'm like, Tito Puente? I'm, 
17, 18 years old. You know what I mean? I don't, I'm not really savvy with that whole man. Your dad came in like he, he he walked in. He was like royalty when he walked in. You know what I mean? He was just a genuine article, man. And this is my experience. I'm telling y'all, my experience. He came in. He was dressed. He was told, I was like, wow. And his hair was quaffed in the whole nine yards. And I was like, wow. I mean, you know, and then, and then, you know, he was a little older. So I was like, you know, cause I think I'm hip, you know, we hot, you know, I, why would you have him? I, he's fly. Don't get me wrong. He's fly. But you know, like what's he going to do on this joint? We got the, you know, this the new man. We got to, she'll be like, yeah, well, well, we're going to get it down to this part right here. And he had his stuff set up in the studio. And man, your dad lit that dag track up, man. I, 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 I made it my business when I knew you were coming on the show. It's like I was telling everybody earlier that I've been listening to a lot of our music. And, uh, you know, I've got the, I have the joy now of being a, mat a mature, uh, much more mature musician, songwriter, experience of this whole thing. And went back, and I also am a drummer too. So I was trained. I was wow. trained as a drummer, you know, from the, uh, from the age of seven. So from all of them aspects, I just went back yesterday and listened to Sugar Hill Groove. And your dad, the the, the drum patterns, the phrasing, the placement of what your dad did on that track was phenomenal, man. Did, what are some of the artists that you know he he worked with, man? Wow, well, Tito Puente they work not only uh, not only that the story that you just told he was one of the first Latin artists to ever be on a hip hop record, and you guys were the pioneers of that sound of hip hop and and Tito Puente was the first. We have a he mutual friend named Joe. We have a mutual friend named Joe Conzo, Joe Conzo Jr., and uh, Joe Conzo Jr. Uh, his father was with my father in the studio when he recorded with you guys. Yeah, so. Wow. I was told that the story was a gentleman by the name of Morris Levy was yes. friends with Sylvia. Uh -huh. yes. So Morris Levy owned Tico Records, which is the record label my father was on. And the story goes is that Morris asked my dad, hey, I want you to do me a favor and go play some drums across the bridge. He was coming out of one of the gigs up in, uh, I think in, in Spanish Harlem. He was, he was performing uh... that evening. And Joe Sr. said to my father, he said, hey, we're going to go to Sugar Hill. My dad said, Sugar Hill? That's 145th Street in Harlem. What are we going to do up there? He said, no, we're going to go to the Sugar Hill Studios in Inglewood, New Jersey. He said, that's good because it's on the way home because we lived north on the Palisades Parkway. We went up north and we got off, I think it was exit one or two off the Palisades. It was right there. Mm -hmm. So Sylvia was at the studio with, with you and, and the group and yes. Joe uh, drove dad there. And he says, all right, I'm going to do a favor for, for Morris Levy. And Sylvia wants me to go play on this record with this new group, hip hop group. I didn't, my father didn't know you guys. And you, in return, didn't know him. So it was a clash, almost not a clash, but a meeting of two genres at that moment. Mambo yeah. music and hip hop music. And it was the first time in history that that ever happened. So Tito Puente was one of the first pioneers of playing on a hip hop record ever. I think it was probably before Curtis Blow had Jimmy Delgado was, play on the breaks. He played the everything. song on the breaks. There was a no, Timbale no. solo there. It you was, guys were was, first. Period. Your dad, yes. was, like you said, it was the first of its kind. Like I said, literally, right. Rapper's Delight was still a hot record, yet, you know, right. at the same time, literally. And and, right. and 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 uh, 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 that record, Sugar Hill Groove, was the record that was to follow the Sugar Hill Gang album. Sugar Hill Groove, mm. I believe, was the B side of a single that you did. Uh, so it was on the B side, but it came out after the album. But it was on the right. album itself. Yeah. And man, that was just historic. His, you know, historically has to be. You know, there's so many people that say, "Well, who was the first Latin artist to play on a hip hop record?" And there it is, right there. It's your, da so your dad. Sylvia, Sylvia and, and, put that together. And uh, I remember when dad, up. yeah, I think dad came home that night. He said, hey, you like that hip hop music, right? I said, man, I love that. It was just coming up. And so he up. said, I played with these guys named Sugar Hill Gang. I said, what do you, oh my God. I was nine years old, but I was such right. a fan. <laughs> I was a fan boy. <laughs> and it was incredible. It was incredible. And I believe the song was nine minutes and 42 seconds. That's real right. Long, real That's long, right. long, long, long hip hop song. Yes. Yes. And uh, 
And I, I heard dad did it in one take. They called it one TT, one take no. Tito. Went in no there question. and knocked it out. <laughs> no question. He laid down the first joint and did yeah. his thing. And then they moved it to the next section. And then he did his thing. I'm telling you, man, it was it was incredible. I, you know, I had I'd had some experience, you know, being in the studio around musicians because I kind of came up in that setting. Actually, I knew Sylvia before Sugar Hill. You see, uh, 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 my dad was a, an engineer and he also was like a jazz trumpet player. He knew Mr. Levy and he knew Sylvia. So I used to hang out at that studio as a kid. So I was familiar with the, you know, the protocol and the etiquette. And I had met, and I had met a lot of jazz musicians. But your dad was like, because, you know, like I said, and then the, like you, like he did his research and, you know, he knew what was happening. I, I'm, I'm asking, you know, I went to find Tito Puente, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're like, yeah, Tito Puente, you, yeah, Tito Puente on you. And, you know, and as the years went on, you know, and this, this conversation would come up, people would be like, what? He played right. on your, oh, did it, did it? you don't, I was like, I know now, you know what I mean? <laughs> I get it now. It was yeah, unbelievable yeah. and very innovative at the time when it did happen. And at that time, my father was already playing, you know, Latin jazz music and mambo music around New York City, around the world for that matter, with Celia Cruz and the Fania All-Stars. But at that time, he wanted to indulge in different styles of music and different genres. And he was one of the first pioneers with you guys in pioneering that sound and, and bringing Latin and hip hop together. And not only that, he was also coming off of the Carlos Santana, the Oye Como Va stuff. So he was dabbling into the rock world too. So Tito Puente at that time was reinventing himself. My father mm -hmm. reinvented himself quite a few times throughout his 50 year career. But that mm -hmm. at that moment was something very unique and innovative for Sylvia to bring you guys and pop together like that. So how did you get into uh, playing? You know, like I said, I started playing drums because yeah. my dad was a musician and I was around music and I was around uh, live music. So I saw yeah. it being done. I was a part of it. And I kind of started tinkering on the drums in the studio. That's how I started playing. And then yeah, one thing led to another. So what about you? Uh, gee, you know, they always tell you, your parents always tell you, you know, don't touch my stuff. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. What do you do as a kid? You go that's and touch it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. You know, <laughs> Pop, had the, Pop had the cowbells, the maraca. Tim Bales, he said, don't be touching my drums. And then I went in the garage and started playing on them. But I was a trap kit drummer first. I played rock first. Wow. I, played, I love playing drums. And then right. I moved over to Tim Bales as I got older into the Latin music world in the, the late 90s. But right. I always was, in the 80s, I was playing, you know, man, Phil Collins, you know, Neil Perk Rush. Those are my favorite. Yeah. Anton Fig, those are Rush? my drummers. Woo! Yeah, man, those are my drummers, you know, real drummers. Oh, Oh, you Boy, drumming. Rush is crazy. He's, he's yeah. Now. Yeah. He's yeah. Now, but yeah. Yeah. God rest his soul. Whoa. Neil Pearl Rush playing. Yeah. Big per time. Played per he played a Pearl drum set. Always played Pearl. Yeah, man. He played it. He played it. Played I, the Pearl I, drum I, set. Just I know. crazy I know. drumming. And yeah. my dad bought me a drum set at that time. He said, don't touch my drums. I'll buy you a set and you play your own. So I had the garage band, you know, that we called it. And uh, that was it. So I started, and what's great about it is that Tito Puente, a lot of people are, are misconstrued about how I was born and raised. And they think that my father taught me how to play drums. He did not. He was very instrumental in saying, you got to go to school. You got to go get drum lessons because my dad had, didn't have patience. Asencia, as we call it in Spanish. He didn't have the patience to sit there and try to teach me. He was too busy doing 200 shows a year. So he made me go to school and, and learn how to read and write music. And I'm so grateful for that, even right. to this day. You know, it was, it was so how did how has your career progressed? I mean, you went from you know playing in the garage, which and that's one thing. <laughs> before you answer that question, that was the time. You know, in that time, early seventies, late sixties, everybody. That's what happened. You know, you played in a band in your neighborhood. You know, you played in a band. You know, somebody played the bass. You know, your friend played the bass next door. Your buddy played the guitar. Somebody else played the keyboard. You know, and because that's what was going on in the adult world you know, funk, Latin, jazz, we saw all of that going on. That's what you recreated. Like kids are recreating DJing now. People in our time growing up, that's what you did. You duplicated it on a level. So how'd you go from, yeah. you know, the neighborhood stuff into, you know, the world of uh, uh, entertainment, which of course- Origi you know. or Origi Well, like you said, uh, 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 hey, we did it to get chicks. You know, we wanted to get girls. <laughs> That's why we were in bands, man. You know what I mean? You sure you ain't in the group with this guy? 
<laughs> you know, man, I was trying not to be a menudo. Right? A... <laughs> man, I was trying to get girls. When we were kids, we wanted to get girls. If you knew how to play drums, everybody's like, yo, you go home with the drummer. Because the drummer got rhythm, you know? <laughs> and then I just followed the lead. You know, Tito Puente was superstar and famous. So I said, man, I got to pick up the drums and do something. And then that's when I started going with the drum kit. And I wanted to do rock music. I was more influenced by, you know, Prince, Michael Jackson, Phil Collins, you know, the, the, the pop music of that era right, was right. what I was into. And I right, love how, right, you know, all, right. the hip hop mixed with, with, right. with Run DMC and all that, mixed with the rock right, and rap. Right, and, right. Uh, that's how I got into it. But uh, cool. through, that, through that whole, you know, time of the 80s into the 90s, I was playing drums with a local band locally in mm -hmm. New York. Uh, it was heavy metal and rock music. I love heavy metal and rock music too. I, my father hated so it. He was like, so man, I. that rock music, boo. You know, he didn't care for it. He was into jazz. <laughs> you know, Duke right, Ellington, right. Ella Fitzgerald, right. Cal Basie, right. you know, right. those greats. So I respected him for that. And he respected me because I was teaching dad about you guys. I was teaching him about hip hop. I was teaching him about rock. And he's like, man, that's pretty cool. He didn't even know who Carlos Santana was until Santana redid the song. And they right. discovered who he was. So he's like, wow, this Mexican guitar player became a worldwide superstar. And thank you for playing Oye Como Va and remaking the song into that version. So yeah. it was, uh, that's, that's it great. was that's another great, innovative, man. another innovative part of Tito Puente's career. But me yeah, personally, right. I kind of just went around and, and I got my, my, my chops up. That's what we call it. We got our chops up by performing right. live right. in little rat hole clubs and different places right. all around you know, tri-state area. Right. And that's how I got in, into right. it. You know, my father did not help me. I did it all on my own that's, with that's my little up. with that's, my little that's, that's brothers and up. sisters playing guitar and rock. And I'm glad that, that we ended up getting that getting our feet wet in the music industry. And then I got into right. traveling, traveling with Dito Puente. And that's why I started mm -hmm. feeling that clave, cha, 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 cha. I started feeling that rhythm. And that mm -hmm. Puerto Rican right. roots came out in me. And the New York <laughs> mambo and all that started developing. And that's when I got into right. Latin music and Latin house music. That's what's up. That, what, that's, what, yeah. that's, that's great. That's great, Tito. So so basically what, what, what you're saying, which is uh, a lot of issues, a lot of questions that everybody have, like, well, like uh, their son living up to their father's legacy or something. Your, your father just let you do your own thing. So you felt no pressure at all to try to live up to his legacy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, the he way it was going did. back... The, the way it was called back there was called nepotism. That was the word, mm -hmm. you know. So I tell everybody, I'm not Enrique Iglesia. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Julio Iglesia, you know, yes, Balladier, right. Enrique yeah. Pop. So yeah. I kind of diverted from that a little bit. It was very hard as gr growing up as a child, you know, I didn't really understand it. I didn't like mambo music. I used to fall asleep at the concerts. Me and my sister Audrey, and she became a meteorologist and I did rock music. So it was like, we weren't in the mambo right. Latin music world. We liked right. your stuff. We like going to hip hop right. concerts and rock concerts. Uh, but that Latin music developed in me traveling with him and experiencing how far reaching Tito Puente's music became around the world over, of course, in the Far East, in the Orient, Japan, over there in Indonesia and all those Oriental countries all really embraced Latin music. And then, of course, in Europe, all over, you know, Russia, uh, uh, Germany, you know, all the Baltic uh, uh, countries. It, I didn't understand it. But when I traveled with him, I understand that music really brings people together, especially mm -hmm. Latin music. And everybody mm -hmm. danced to one groove. Mm -hmm. And that was how, how I mm -hmm. developed my Latin music thing. It's so wanna, funny because he's just your dad it. when he's traveling. He's like, oh, dad had to go someplace. Dad had to yeah. go away. Dad, just, you know, dad's here, dad's right. there. But what you don't realize is that you're looking at dad like this. Yeah. You know, like this is this is all you know. You know, he comes home, he's gonna smack me in my head if I don't do the right thing, he's gonna do this, right. he's gonna do that. He's dad. But to the rest <laughs> of the world, it's like, what do you mean yeah. you put those junior? Oh my god, oh my god. Yo, can I can I can, can I get New York yes. over here? I'm gonna curse yes. you. Go, go, yes. go. My father, Be free. my father, my father used to say, you know, because I, I we were home, me and my sister, and we would, you know, do our schoolwork, and sometimes we didn't do so well. And then, you know, we'd give my mother a headache and my father was traveling 200 shows a year. So he'd come home, my mother would come play, say, get your ass home, your son's doing bad in school. He'd come home, he'd be like, you fuck with her and you get it. 
<laughs> and that was it. So I said, I ain't gonna fuck with my father because he gonna come home. You know, he had these Popeye arms. Yes. You know I mean? His yes. arms, very yes. big yes. arms. Yes. Short, yes. short man, about about five foot tall, but very powerful arms. And yes. I would see him play, and I said, this motherfucker's gonna knock me out. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, a couple yeah. of times it got it got close to it, and I said, I'm never gonna mess with Tito Puente because he was my dad was a yeah. street guy, you know, he yeah. was from the streets of Spanish Harlem, and I knew yeah. he didn't take no bullshit. So uh, I kind of stayed in line, stayed in my lane, if you will. Hey, when it came to I want, no I want, I want, no I want, because Carlos Santana is probably one of my a uh, 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 greatest artist. I mean, if I had a top five, he would be in that top five without question, Santana. And I, I, can you tell me the Oyo Como Va when like the first time I heard it was of course from Santana. I didn't even realize up until I did more research that, you know, it was your dad's song. So tell, talk about that, man, because I mean, that that combination, you know, yeah. that's like his rapper's delight. That's Carlos' like rapper's delight, you know? Yeah, and uh, go figure in comparison to what how you guys had it with your record with Rapper's Reprise, uh, um, that Sugar Tito Puente, or part of me, Sugar Hill Group, part of me, that's right. right. That Sugar Hill Group, it was right. a B-side, and Oya Como Va was a B-side as well. It was one of those songs that they weren't really pushing for the album. The record was recorded in 1963, on an album called El Rey El Bravo. And of course, I don't have, I have one copy, I think, uh, in my storage unit, but it kind of looked like this one. He had the, he didn't have the white hair yet. <laughs> but, the, um, okay. so the record, the record came out, it was a cha-cha-cha number, and it was inspired mm -hmm. by uh, the great Cachao, Chanchulo. So the song, the record only sold about 3,000 copies at that time. It was on uh, Tico Records, which was, of course, uh, the, the label that, that my father was Marcia working Levy. with, a lot of yeah. Mars Marcia Levy, Levy, that's correct. Yeah. And yeah. so Carlos Santana was a fan. He was very young. He must have been at least 16 years old. Or had to be. Be, he had yeah. to be maybe yeah. Even yeah. 10 years old. Inspired right. by a Tito Puente record that maybe his parents or his mom played while she was cleaning the house. And he got inspired by that and then redid it in 1971 on a Braxis album. The record, of course, went gold and platinum, still selling millions today. And what happened at that time, my father's career was kind of going a little bit in a downward because at that time, the pachanga was very popular. Mm -hmm. And the, and boogaloo, boogaloo music was very popular in the 19, mm -hmm. end of the 60s into the 70s. So my father wasn't playing that. He was playing old 1950s music. So mm -hmm. the music industry changed a little bit. So he wasn't gigging as much. I was born, two things happened in 1971. The Carlos Santana mm -hmm. record came out and I was born. <laughs> so at that time, uh, my dad was like, wow, my career's not really moving anymore. He didn't know how to come out and reinvent himself. And then of course he got a nice royalty check from the residuals <laughs> of Oye Como Va. And he said, man, there's a lot of zeros on this check. <laughs> and that's when, that's when we moved. We were like the Puerto Rican Jeffersons. We moved from Manhattan, then we moved up to Rockley County. We moved on up. <laughs> so, so thank you, Carlos Santana, right. for, for redoing my father's right. music. <laughs> yes. And that's, that's how right. the song, you know, just really exploded. Oh, man. Life of its own, and it became... And then that's yes. when pop started dabbling in the rock music. And then, of mm -hmm. course, in the 70s, late 70s, got right. into then your band. And so. see how that's, I wanted to bring that into the, to, 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 to the conversation because, you know, it, that was a very pivotal move that, that Carlos made with your dad. And then that actually, like you just said, it actually brought the, uh, the, the openness. Because what will happen, and I'm, 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 I'm bad for this, you know, it, once you kind of get your lane and you get your place, you kind of want to stay in your own zone, you know what I mean? And and it, it takes younger people, it takes, you know, people that have the vision to even see the appreciation for what you got going on, which is kind of what has happened to me too, and Mike, uh, uh, to get into different forms of music, get into different uh, uh, levels of reinventing. I, I'm doing this podcast because of the people that I'm sitting here with, you follow me? The producers right. of the show, and you know, Han and Diamond, you know, they, these are guys, they're a little bit older, but they always had a more open view of the world. 
So a lot of the things that we're doing is a, is, 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 is a direct result of the synergy. And that's why I wanted to bring that up, man. It's so important that people understand that you can melt so many different walks of life and different thoughts and ideals and concepts, man. And because they all come to a common ground, man. We all just trying to experience life at a high level. And we all trying to, you know, be good people when it's all said and done. And at the end of the day, we're just trying to make sure that everybody in our life is good. Uh, wouldn't you agree on that? Would you, uh, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Well, that's what, uh, that's, I, I agree on that simply because that's what my father did for all those years of his career. He brought people and culture together. Cultures, black, white, Hispanic, all danced at the Palladium in the 1950s. Remember, Tito Puente, when he was performing at that time in the 50s, a lot of racism. So when he performed down in Miami and all the places, they would he would have black uh, 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 musicians in his orchestra. And he would have them, Afro-Cuban was really the, the, the terminology. And he was mm -hmm. playing Afro-Cuban music. And remember, my dad had the kink in his hair, too. So they always thought, Tito Puente, is he black? Is he white? Puerto Rican? What is he? They didn't know. <laughs> no? And, you know, and then he, he's from Spanish Harlem, but he would hang out in the Apollo, one of the first musicians right. to play, Latin musicians to play at the Apollo Theater, have his picture up, probably one of the mm -hmm. only ones, him and Shelly Cruz. So it's like, well, he's honorary brother, he honorary mm -hmm. Puerto Rican, honorary Italian, honorary Jewish, you know, he had all types of fans, but that's right. the key to it. He brought people together. And that's what you guys do too. You know, that was the whole purpose of having what he had, which was that, Innovative sound that brought people and cultures together. That's what Latin yeah. music really does. Anybody oh, no. can listen to Tito Puente record, you dancing. I don't care where yeah, you're from, uh, you dancing. <laughs> listen, listen. We got a we got a tune that we call it's called Club on Lock, it, and it's a, it's got a kind of like a Latin kind of feel to it. Now this is a crazy. We'll be talking situation. to you about that in a minute. No, oh, my okay. God. <laughs> it, 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 I, think it, I, I think I heard that. Yeah, there's a crazy story about this song. So we had a great guy when I. I was away from the group, came back in 2005. In 2005, one of the first things we did is we went to the studio and started cutting new material. That was initially the, the project. Mike and I were supposed to go in the studio and cut new stuff. So one of the songs that we were introduced to was this song called Club on Lock. So it was very Latin and, and it was a salsa kind of thing. It was a, a dude, what's George's name, y'all? George Mena. George, George Mena. George Mena. Yeah. Mm -hmm. George Mena. And, mm -hmm. and so, this song has this flavor and you know, it's all, you, oh, da, 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 da. long story short, we cut the record. We, we never released this song, okay? We never released this song, but That's every show think. that we do, we call it the con we call it concert music. So we, we tell the crowd, we get ready to play some new stuff for you. This, this is concert music. You can only hear it at a Sugar Hill Gang concert. Nobody's ever heard this song when we play it. Every single time we play this song, because it's got that flair to it, that thing, 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 yeah. boom, thing. everybody starts dancing, and then it's oh, it's a club, it's popping. Yeah. Then they sing in the hook. I mean, because and it's the, and I'm and, and the quintessential, the, the the nucleus of that song is the Latin feel. The minute I don't care where we, I'm talking about, I'm talking about Warsaw, Poland, man. I, we've been in Warsaw, Poland. You know what I mean? And did this record and literally. Polish people, they dancing. It doesn't matter, man. And and that music, man, Latin music, it's like like you said, it's like hip hop. It's like rap music, man. Right. You know, it's like you 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 put a you 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 can be anywhere in the world. You know, Wu Tang. You know, we did a concert with one of the guys from Wu Tang. I didn't know much about Wu Tang, but I'm standing there in the, in the crowd because I like to watch the crowd. I'm standing in the crowd. And I'm watching like three thousand people. Like mm, mm, they're kind of like. You know, and Latin music has this, has that. I don't care where it is, I don't care who it is. The minute you start cracking that rhythm, it's people gonna dance, man. It's just it's enjoyment music, man. There's so much love and so much history in 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 Latin music. It's crazy, man. Uh, uh, where are some of the places that you played? Uh, 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 where you uh, experienced that? Well, I could tell you, I traveled around the world with my father, so I've seen more places than the average kid. Simply right. because he went to play. I think he's been on every continent and he was trying to do a concert on Antarctica <laughs> one time. My dad was nuts like that. Wow. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a first Puerto Rican to play on the moon. And I said, He's probably <laughs> there now. He's probably there now, jamming. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but uh, I've seen some great, great concerts around the world in places on ships and 
cruise ships and uh, just different continents. It was just incredible what the, the amount of uh, uh, voyages that Tito Puente had throughout his career. He did about 300 shows, about 250 shows a year for about 20 years straight. It's like, it. That's like that's like Metallica that's stuff. You know, that's like yeah. heavy duty right. rock right. band, like right. Iron Maiden, yeah. you know. Right, us, right, It's right. like us insane. Too, right. Yeah, us yeah. Too, right. yeah, us too. Us yeah, too, you right. guys too. You guys, no you, guys no you guys know what it's like and seeing yeah. all those different yeah, faces. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's just would amazing. You, right. Would you say, Tito, right. that 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 the, 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 the music industry, as far as Latin music, the way that your father played, the stuff that, that you've done, would you say it's still being received? Well, I know a lot of the um, stations that um, played it um, are, are just dwindling down. I mean, we spoke earlier about um, uh, Hilton Ruiz. Um, uh, I know he mm -hmm. played with your father yes. and our, our mutual friend, Adita, and I yeah. watched her go through her transition when the, they were playing less and less, even on, you know, I know you make a, a lot of your, your the, the ends off the you know the the spins and and right. they were going down and even yeah. in paid music they they dropped a lot of the stations so how, i mean how right. you feeling about that you know uh, uh, uh you know no anita knows her father was amazing god rest his soul he played with my god father and yeah. a grammy award winner too as a hilton the great yeah. hilton ruiz yeah uh they, just a fantastic did a lot of compositions with my father too good mm -hmm. composer and arranger um but yeah, you know what happened? The formats of a lot of the radio stations in the Latin music world switched to the reggaeton trap music format. Exactly. You know, and then they pulled the salsa. So the salsas come in mixed show plays, you know, noon mixes and stuff like that. That's because our generation, you know, the, the demographic is a little bit older now. And, you know, we don't, we can't hang out all night, man. We can't do the 3 a.m., 4 a.m. <laughs> shit. You know, these young bucks, they go out, the, the reggaeton, <laughs> you know, guys, they can right. hang hard in the clubs. And that's what really how it trend started from the DJs, then went over to the formats of the radio station. However, the salsa music world, there is a market in around the world. Like, I'm not even just going to say the United States. It's around right. the world. Right. That the right. festivals are still large. They're very big. Mm -hmm. And my father did something that was very innovative again throughout his career. He noticed that. In the 80s, everything turned into salsa romantica. This is when the Jerry oh. Riveras, Frankie Ruiz, uh, 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 there were some Eddie Santiago's. These were the guys that were crooners, and mm -hmm. they would sing love to, to the ladies. So the ladies right. would go to the clubs and want to see these guys. They weren't interested in seeing a white-haired old timbale player. So my right. father did something clever. He said, I'm going to change the name and not call it Tito Puente y su orquesta. I'm going to say Tito Puente and his Latin jazz ensemble. He put that word jazz in there, and that took him, boom, right over the bridge, over to Europe, and into the jazz world. And that's when Birdland came into play, and all these other jazz clubs. So that's clever. That's a real clever move. It's kind of like reinventing, you know, yourself mm -hmm. and, and doing pop music and hip hop, and you got to add the, the drum and bass and the house music, and you got to add all that. Mm -hmm. So he did yeah. that. He just changed the name, but he still played salsa. He still played mambo music, you know. Right. So it really um, it didn't change much. It just changed the name and it got a new whole new market. It's funny you said right. that because, you know, yeah. going into new forms of music, you know, my biggest concern was always, I didn't want to sound dated. You know what I mean? I didn't want to be like the guy that sound like the, this year or this era. And every time I've done a project with people or every time I've done something with people and, and attempted to like, you know, go in the flood. Like, no, 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 no. We want you. We want what you want your sound. And I, I started finding that I didn't, I didn't need to change what I was doing. I, I just needed to do my thing because people really cherish that tone and my vocal tone or the way I phrase words or, you know, how I, uh, you know, placement, you know, how, I, how, I, how I place lyrics or sounds or whatever the case may be. And, and, and it's amazing how, how, you know, widely appreciated it is. And, 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 and you know, when you, when you said that about your dad, he didn't do anything different. He just reinvented his environment. Yeah. He didn't change himself, just, he changed right. the environment. And I've Same learned, music. right. And I'm learning mm -hmm. that as I go to, you know what I mean? I'm learning that right. I don't need to change me. I just need to change my environment because my, I'm going to fit the setup. Gee, yeah. it's so inspiring for you to say that to me. I'm inspired by you you know, because I've been a fan of, for so many years. And it's nice to know that you're okay with singing the songs 
that you first started out with. I know because you're not 17 anymore. I got that. But my 17 or my nine-year-old self still loves you in that aspect that I still look at you as a 17-year-old Master G that rocks that mic. So right. always remember that with the fans. They always appreciate that. And my father taught me that. He said he won Grammys playing songs that he did in 1950 towards the end of his life. So he won mm-hmm. two Grammys for Live at Birdland and Live at Birdland or Mambo Birdland too. Two albums that were songs from Rank Gang Gang and all these old mm-hmm. classic Tito Puente songs from the 1950s. He wasn't doing anything new. It's just people were still getting a new generation and respecting what he was doing. So that's it. A- a- absolutely. That's absolutely. the thing. It makes it's a the, big difference. It's, yeah. It's the, yeah. It's, the, it's, the, it's the generations that are getting it. You know, that's the thing that I had to come to. That was my, yeah. my, my awakening. It's that, you know, quality is quality. You know what I mean? Timeless. It doesn't matter if, it, yeah, Timeless it doesn't matter if it's if it's if, if it's 1969 or it's 2029. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, quality yeah. is quality. You know, like your dad, his music will never not be quality music, and it'll be appreciated right. long beyond you know the time that we're not here. And you know, and, and our children's right. children will be listening to you know right. your dad's stuff. You know, and that's right. you know, and, and it seems to be now seems to be the case with us that you know. We're getting that now. You know, here we are four decades into our career and right. people are still, right. I mean, I'm still, mm-hmm. uh, I'm, I'm doing the thing tomorrow. I'm doing an interview for a girl that's 12 years old. You know, she's wow. got this whole, pro- yeah, she's got this whole project mm-hmm. that she's doing uh, and it's some kind of thing and she had to t- pick a group and she picked Sugar Hill Gang and the girl's 12 years old and she's doing this whole thing that she's using for some big, some big uh, contest that she's in. And you know, it's mm-hmm. like 12 years old for a group that came out before she wasn't even, she was a chromosome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you a you thought, know. nothing but a thought. Right, yeah, right. Thought. You know, you know, you know and she, and, and, I mean, and, and, and like, and like the whole, the whole crew, the people, uh, you know, a mom, and because her mom was a yeah. producer, they, they, it was a television producer, and they used to work with Ricky Lake and all these other people, whatever. Right. But it's like, it's like they're losing their mind. And like, so we're so excited to talk to you. And whenever people say that to me, it's like, okay, like you, Tito, I know we, you know, we would say you grew up with us, so it's cool. I get it. You know, right. I understand. But when, but when somebody twelve years old is talking about, I'm excited to talk to you. I'm gonna correct you. I'm losing my mind right now talking to you. Trust me. <laughs> I just, I'm just not showing it. I'm not showing it, but I play the bell. <laughs> I, I, so, I love so, the Sugar Hill Gang. I'm a fan for life. See, G, I don't I even so. have to play my percussion today. He got I know, you get it, you get it all today. <laughs> Stop. I know, Tito, right? Tito, no I'm, I, I'm, I'm the percussionist in the group. Yeah. So you we, are, we, that's we, right. We play live. And and yeah. so my, my rig consists of uh-huh. my timbales, my SPD, yeah. my keys, you know, like, and yeah. I, I, I love it, man. Uh, Diamond, do you, you know Anita's uh, uh, baby daddy, who's Phoenix Rivera? I know he's a drummer. You know, right, I know right. Phoenix. So, yeah. So Fe- yeah, Phoenix is a his father Mario Rivera played in my father's orchestra exactly uh, for years. An amazing saxophone player. They call him El Mayimbe, El, com- El, El Comandante, the commander. <laughs> yeah. <Whoa. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like El, Coman- El Comandante. Why do you uh, stop calling right. me that? Don't give him nothing. Don't give him yeah. nothing. Don't give him nothing. All right. Don't right. give him nothing. So, so, yeah, yeah. Right. Hey, hey, Tito, yeah. let me ask so, you. So, so, in, 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 go, in your go thing ahead, here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dick. Um, yes, I saw you did an album called In My Father's Shoes. Yes. Um, now, that had to really... Now, now if, if I'm not mistaken, that was after his death, right? That's correct. It was a tribute record after his passing. What, how did, how, what did that feel like, man? Man, it was tough. And I got to tell you, so it was tough for me because I had a, the name of the album was In My Father's Shoes. So I had to step up to the plate. You know, what I was feeling after he died on May 31st, 2000, feels like yesterday to me. Uh, and 20, 20 year, 21 years ago this year, um, at that time, there were a lot of tributes a lot of tributes coming out from the island of Puerto Rico and everywhere. Everybody was doing tributes and tribute albums and tribute records to Tito Puente because he was such an inspiration to every percussion player and musician around the world at the time. Clean the Grammys, we did a tribute there as well. The first annual Latin Grammys, they tributed it. With, uh, the beginning was Tito Puente with Ricky Martin, Gloria Stefan, yeah. Celia Cruz, all of them. Um, Hilton, as a matter of fact, was there too as well. Uh, at, at that time, 
uh, there were so many tributes and my manager was like, really the inspiration was my mom and I asked them for their blessing. I said, man, you gotta pick up some drumsticks and start playing some, you know, do a tribute to your father, it's only right. I was very, very hesitant guys. I wouldn't yeah. wanna do it. Wow. I was very nervous. That's a whole new world. I was doing Latin hip hop at the time, doing like merengue house, like Proyecto mm -hmm. Uno, Ilegales. Yeah. This is, you know, three, four did you, guys. Did you work with Little Louie too? Yeah, I worked with Little Louis Vega with the house music and the freestyle mm -hmm. and dance. So I was dabbling in that. And I really wanted to go, again, I tell you, I wanted to be a menudo. I wanted to be in a boy band, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that was my thing. Right. And, but but my, my mother was like, hey, you know, we got to do something for, for, for your father, and I'll give you my blessing. If you want to pick up the timbal sticks and try that, you know, route, I'll do it. I took the magic of my father. I got his spirit in me. And I decided to get some of the members of his orchestra, including Mario Rivera, to do a tribute album for him. I took all the songs from the 1940s and 50s that made his career uh, when he first started out on RCA Victor. And I took a lot of those old school classic songs, remade them into an album. And that was it. Then my career took off as Tito Puente Jr. And then I was like, I didn't know how to handle that because remember, I was doing just certain markets, Texas, right, California, right. Florida. Mm -hmm. Now this took me into that whole world of, you know, worldwide, Tito Puente, everybody know, oh, his son's doing a tribute, let's bring him and see how mm -hmm. that works out. Mm -hmm. And it was very nerve wracking. And it, I, I, again, I got my feet wet in that whole thing of trying to replace. I could never replace my father. It was just too heavy for me. So I decided to, right. to do my own style. And when I came out with my second album, I started putting a little bit of Latin jazz original content in there and try to develop that whole thing. But, you know, I can never be, um, I'm always proud of being here. You know, I sport is yeah, base right. everywhere. It's right, all yeah, over yeah, my yeah, home. Absolutely. Right. Well, I, I embrace who I am. I'm embracing who I am now that I'm going to be right. 50 this year. I appreciate who I am. I appreciate my father's legacy, the career he's left for me right. to mm -hmm. take his music and bring it to the new generation. And that's right. how I kind of, because remember, I got a lot of haters out there too. You can't play. You'll never be him. Where's your white hair? <laughs> you, <Wow>. know? <laughs> right. you know? I get right. that. I get it. Right. I get it. But, you know, I'm being very candid right now, guys. And, yeah. No, yeah, please. I, no, I yeah, that's what we're here yeah. for. Yeah, and I appreciate that I get that little bit of hater action because it drives me to do to do better and to practice more and to, to learn a little bit more about my craft of playing percussion. And that, right. you know, other musicians are usually the ones that kind of point the finger at me. Well, you got to get your right. timing right. right. And right. I, that's good for me to learn. I get the constructive criticism. Right. I got to right. get my timing right. I got to do better. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. I, and right. I do do better. And I, and I force myself to do better. So it helps me in my heart. It's, it, you know, any naysayers or negativity that comes my way, I always take it as constructive criticism. I can't be hurt by it anymore. No, no, simply no because doubt. Of no doubt. Being, being his son, I right. always had that shadow. I always mm -hmm. have it, right. but I yeah, embrace absolutely. it now. That's, I that's, embrace it. So, I would say that I would say that it makes it harder. Yeah. It does. It does make it harder. Right. But what I do is I kind of flip it around and I embrace it. And now with everything I just mentioned, I'm taking my father's right. story and it has to be told. So I'm gonna do a documentary, right. and I'm working right. with right. Uh, Mr. Edward James yep. Olmos. Yep. We're gonna do a documentary on him, yeah. on his life, yeah. because I want to know what drove Tito Puente. What was the magic that pushed him to become that that superior ambassador of Latin music worldwide? And I'm talking about from the beginnings, bo being born and raised in Spanish Harlem. Ain't got no cell phones back then. You ain't got no internet or no, you can't comment on a Facebook or Instagram post. <laughs> so, you know, it, what, he was getting that negativity probably from the street, the naysayers. Ah, hey, look at little Tito playing in the corner of Central Park. He stinks, you know? And that's maybe was the the, you know the the energy that maybe drove him to become who right. he was right and mm -hmm. so I want, right. I want that story to be told and i feel that drive within me a little bit so mm -hmm. i feel like that story needs to be brought to to the fans of the world and it's something right. that'll be coming out it'll be coming out one of the digital platforms when i'm putting it together with with konzo and edward james that, Olmos that, that's and what's up exciting so that's, that's what's so, up. so so so, I, so, 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 so tito is is is, is, yeah. is anything that uh you could you could share with us that you take from your father that, that you learned from your father today that you, you know, that you use while you're performing in the studio or on stage? Yeah, all the time. You know, I, uh, I, I always tell everybody in my, my, it was his monikers. It, it was his, you know, 
go-to statement, which is surround yourself with creative people, thus you will be creative. If you got people around you kicking off, you rubbing off on them, everybody says, oh, you stole my, in the rap world, you stole uh, my lines and you stole this. You didn't steal nothing. You influenced me. You influenced each other. So if I'm hanging around other percussion players, man, I'll go all night with them and get a riff or two or feeling or just songwriting. You feel that. So surround yourself with creative people. Thus, you'll be creative. It's very hard during this quarantine to do that. But I try my best to do these Zooms so I can interact with my musician friends and the guys in my band. And it brings me closer to my, what my father really was. He did two albums a year for for. 50 years, so that's about, I don't know, over 180 yeah. albums or yeah. something like that. Yeah. It's got to be a yeah. world record. How yeah. do you keep creative like that? And my father said, I, I hang out with musicians every day. You know, you, my, have... mother didn't, my mother didn't like it, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Not true. Yeah, it is. We're not just talking about that's no no little uh, uh, eight bars here, 16 bars here. That is arranged music. It has certain, you can't just, yeah. if it goes, bah, 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 it better be exactly that yeah. when you get to that part right. or else you. That's no, correct. That's incredible. That's correct. Totally incredible. Did, did, has what, and, and you know, of course, we, most people are very, no, uh, and I'm going to bring this person in because uh, she's a good person and, and I really like Sheila E. You know, um, yes. uh, 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 I know for a fact, I mean, her dad also was, uh, you know, uh, 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 huge, a huge uh, yes. percussionist. And uh, did, 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 did your guys' dads work together? Did they ever work together? Do you know? Well, I could tell you, Percy Sheila's my musical sister. I love right. her. I'm, yes. I'm trying to work on the, this new album together this year. So Ooh. I'm excited right. to, be, to, to share that with you guys. And Good. Pete Esc Peter Escovito, his father, yes. and her uncle, Coke Escovito, were the percussion players with the Carlos Santana band at that time. Uh, and yeah. so that's how they all connected. Um, they're from West Coast and East Coast, but my father is Sheila's godfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's a, yep. she, they, we're, they're family. The whole Escovito family, Juanita, uh, her mom, uh, Zena, you know, uh, 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 Peter, you know, uh, all the brothers. I love the whole Escovito family and they are very close with us. My dad did work with them many years and uh, he influenced Peter Escovito the most. You know, Peter, Peter, Sheila's father was just, mm -hmm. a, still is at the age of 80 something right now. Man, is still yeah. playing. And yeah. so wow. kudos, wow. kudos to the whole family. Sheila's innovative. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. She makes, yeah. you know, went with Prince and does her own oh, yeah. thing. And she's so, and yeah. I could tell you, me, Tito Puente Jr., that alive today, she has to be one of the best female percussion players, drummers. No question. Today, no living question. today, no question. No question. Hey, she could, no question. Yep. Hey. And and she could do it in five inch heels, my brothers. All right? Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> about, about about two years ago, it's got to be two years ago now. There's a little venue. I'm in the DC the DC area. There's a little venue here in D.C. It's called the Birchmere. It holds about 500 people in there. She came to perform there. And I'm like, yo, like she sat down on, on a set of drums, man. And wow. and when I tell you, it was one of the most, you know, I'm a drummer like you. I'm a, I'm a drummer, right. so I know. Right. I know yeah. what she's doing. You know, now I don't know if I can do what she's doing, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I know what she was doing. And, and it was... It was one of the most magical and incredible things that I've witnessed for an individual, woman or man, yeah. as far as her musician, her, her level of musicianship, man, a, 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 as a percussionist, because of course, you know, she played the timbales and, and everybody, yeah. but, it did, but when she sat down on the drums, man, and, 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 and oh my God, it was, it was Monster. incredible. That's why, that's why I brought her up because Anytime yeah. I talk about or think about, you know, Latin percussionist or whatever the case may be, she's my, she's my, she's my all time, not my all time favorite, man, yeah. when it comes to, you know, uh, uh, of course, I will you that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm just yeah. saying this. And then, like you said, her father and her brothers and all of them, they, you know, the whole sad kind of thing. But to, to watch Sheila E play the drums, uh, yeah. just freehand, oh my mm -hmm. God. Special. She's incredible. Special. And, and, yeah. and, and, you know, she's got a spirit that's, that's, 
uh, to to oh yeah, to, to most drummers' levels would be incomparable. That's how I call yeah. her. I call her incomparable yeah. Sheila E because she just plays her heart out. And I'm glad yeah. that my father got to experience uh, seeing a female drummer so good and a timbal player too. She's the queen of Latin percussion. That's mm-hmm. in the Latin music world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, queen of Latin yeah. percussion. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to tell could, y'all, man. Yeah, man. So as far as timbal playing. Absolutely Bro. the best. And and drumming too. I mean, that's coming from me, but I haven't seen anybody knock her off her, her, her mantle yet. <laughs> no. And I and I no. and I've watched a lot of drummers, man. I've seen a lot yeah. of drummers, you know. Again, I get the be- I get the you know the gift of being able to rub shoulders and do go do shows and right. see people. I mean, I've seen a lot of drummers, man. Yeah, and I've seen a lot of people play percussions, but boy, mm-hmm. that's actually even. Yeah, she's, she, she's I get special. scared around her. I get a little nervous around her all the time. She still I, has I, that. She, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I've seen her a couple of times, and I didn't yeah, want yeah. to tell her I played any kind of percussion. Yeah. I didn't want to bring it up. Yeah, yeah. I know. I wanted yeah. to just to be impressed I mean, with my with my records. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But she's Guys, so sweet. She's so we, sweet like that. You know, as a family. Yeah. You know, We've done a so lot sweet. of done a lot of so shows lot of with her, and, and she always does. She's always yeah. nice. Always no speaks. She's yeah. always pleasant. Yeah. Just a real little, sweetheart. She, I, I always tiny. look at her because she's short. Yeah. yeah. And she goes tiny barefoot tiny. up there and start playing. Yeah. And I'm like, well, she Crazy, can kick right? ass. <laughs> well, I think the, I think the last time we played with her, we were in Miami on a beach. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. With the Jackson. Yeah. 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 And they said to me, this is like, where are you going? I said, I'm going to see Sheila E. They said, you ain't going to see yeah. the Jacksons? I love the Jacksons, but I'm going to see Sheila E. Yeah. yeah. And she yeah, yeah, towed yeah. that show up. Yeah, man. Crazy. Tow it out Crazy. the frame. Very so, cool Tito, do you, do, do you have any questions for us? Since you're 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 a Sugar Hill Ooh, fan from back man. in the day, you you have your first, I mean, I we've never they, had they, a chance. There he is, Tito. Get him. Go on. Go on. Ask him yeah. all the questions you want to. Get him. Get, get him. him. All right. Do you have um, any questions for us? Okay. So... Wow, I got so many questions, but I think most of them pertain to what your experience with my father was. So okay. what was he like? So this is something that I, I really would like to, you know, have for my soul. Um, okay. What was he like when he saw you guys? Did he kind of, he was down to earth, you know, did he, did he greet you guys? I know he wasn't cocky. He just yeah. looked, he looked very yes. cocky, but I know he like, was like, hey man, you know. Right, well, okay, so I'm from the New York metropolitan area. I was born in Manhattan, right. lived in Brooklyn. And, you know, just like everybody, just like you guys, you know, my mm-hmm. family started doing okay. We ended up moving out to Jersey. So, you know, I was familiar with the New York persona, you know what I mean? And my people were street people too. So I was also familiar with that aspect. So I knew, I knew, a, I knew a shirt and tie guy, like a business guy. And I also knew a hustler. I knew that guy. So I had that, that always, I had that impression of people whenever I would meet them, I could see. And your father came through the door with the best of both worlds. I knew oh, that right. he was a cat that knew his way around. You know what I mean? Even though I didn't know like his persona, I knew because I knew people that he was a cat that knew his way around. Like I said, first thing that got me was how he presented himself, how he came across. He was extremely mm-hmm. regal. You know what I mean? You could right. tell, man. You know, certain people just have that that presence of royalty. Like they're not trying to be, you know, fly. They're not trying to be, it just comes out of their pores. You know what right. I mean? Your father had that, man, to tops yeah. and bottoms, you know? Um, right. He was one of the most gracious people that I've ever met. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, it speaks to, as I got older and I started understanding the depth of a person's success, right? Uh, 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 um, it, it, it becomes uh, uh, so important, I see, that the, the bigger you are to the world, the more, the, the smaller you have to be when you're in front of people so that people have a chance to shine. You, fo- you follow what I'm saying? Yes, you know, I do. And maybe small is yeah. not the word, but it's like something that like I noticed in your dad, you know, to, to be in his presence, you wouldn't know that he was as meteoric as he, as he was. And that, everybody can't pull that off. You know what I mean? Everybody can't give you that breathing room to, 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 to shine. So your dad was, he was he was amazing, man. And like I said, Gee, and he, yes, go ahead. I got another question for you. So now, okay. now I know how uh, how you guys interacted with each other. So yes. when the record came out, it came out. I believe it's seventy eight. Was it the seventy nine? Seventy nine. Was it? Rappers of Life. Not 
after the album, the full length album. Oh, Sugar Hill Gang album. Yes, that was 70, that was 79, 80. Yes, 79, 80. Okay, so Rapper Delight came out first, then the full length album. So dad yeah. recorded with you before the album came out, but after Rapper Delight single came out. Yes, yeah, so Rapper Delight was already out. Right. And, and, and yes, and he cut Sugar Hill Groove for right. the album. Yes. Okay. So when he, okay, did did you guys do a record release party or anything? Did Pop attend it? Anything like that? It, it, it was nothing. It was like, it was like, it was a moment in time. You, you follow what I'm saying? Like he came yeah. in, he did his thing. We had our interaction. It was, it was, it was, it was that cool. Was it. I was impressed. You know, yeah. again, like I said, I didn't find out too much later the magnitude of who he was, but right. he came in, he did his thing, blah, 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 and then he was gone. Yeah. And it was like, that was it. It was like, and then, it was like, and, like, a, like a wizard or something right. just came in. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a, a mythological yeah. creature came in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I, that's so that, that's so amazing because I always wondered if dad ever performed the song with you guys live. No. And if no. there's any video of it ever, no. like dad on no. stage with them. And it would have been, can. you know, yeah. the, the older me, the older me knows that that should have happened. You follow what yeah. I'm saying? That right. should have been, because we did the song. You we definitely, we used to do, we used to open the show up with that song. You know what I mean? Right. That's, that's how, once we, you know, we, we were, you know, now we were, you know, big stars or, yes. or whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, we were doing concerts. So we open up the show with, hey, welcome to the party. And if I'm one the mic and I'm ready, I'm ready to rock the house. And I'm Big Ben Cake, yeah. baby, and I'm ready to rock the house. And then I would try to say my line. But of course, you know, the girls would be screaming so hard you couldn't hear me. And then we would go into the song. <laughs> blah, 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 boom. Stop. Right. But we never, we never thought, never you know, uh, 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 we never thought to say, you know, yeah. we need to come, we need to get your dad out. And I wish. You know, yeah. I, I wish, you know. I'm pretty sure it's because his schedules and you guys were already blowing up at that time. Oh, yeah. You, both yeah. your schedules are all over the place. And, uh, yeah. uh, but Sylvia stayed friends with my father for a very long time because I remember seeing her later on after the record came out, the success of you guys and all the other great acts that came off the Sugar Hill label um, mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, she would come over and visit, pop over at this place called the Asia. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's a, it's a Cuban... Uh, so it's right there in Midtown Manhattan. All the Latin mm. stars would go there, but Sylvia would come mm. sometimes and bring some of the, you she, know, the groups that she, she was had. a foodie. She was a foodie. Yeah. She loved good food. She loved yeah, good yeah. restaurants. I, used, yeah. I went to many restaurants with her, but unfortunately, I never went to that one. But yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. She was around that time. Uh, I also wanted to ask you guys, you know, after the success of Rapper's Delight at that time, when you, I mean, it must have been so, you were so young. You know, you were 17, man. I mean, it's yeah. like, it just, it, when I was young, and my, when, when I, I kind of, my, probably the way that I felt when I was young too, when I put out my, my first album, which was a dance music, I was very nervous and didn't understand how things work, you know, management and just being a performance wise. But when you guys were out there, you guys looked like you knew what you were doing. You guys were had it like, boom, like, <laughs> You know, were you nervous at all? Or, or you just, you, it was like you were built for it. The, you know, and again, this is why you, I'm glad that I'm having these conversations with people now at this point in my life, because it, it, if I would have had that conversation that, you know, that time in my life, I wouldn't be able to, to, to articulate it. But, you know, and I've been doing a lot of soul searching lately. You know, it's just kind of, you know, this been going on. But, you know, playing drums at seven years old, being around musicians, you know, uh, being in the studio, uh, my dad flew planes, uh, you know, this, that, and other thing. I was traveled. I used to travel. As, I was groomed, and I believe it now, that I was I was being groomed to be mm -hmm. this guy. You know what right. I'm saying? I, 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 I you know, then, then getting into doing, then doing parties. Like, when I first started rapping, I was rapping in my neighborhood. So I was rapping at parties mm -hmm. and dance halls and, and you all that. MC. Kind of you were MC at I was the time. MC, right. You were MC. I was MCing, but, I was right. MCing. So everything for Sugar Hill was evidently, and I now that I'm coming to the terms with, everything was setting me up to be this person. So when we finally got to being on stage, the way that I, because initially I, I got nervous one time. It was a Rutgers University concert. It was the second show that we did. We went from like being in like a club that had like four or 500 people, because I was used to doing a lot of people parties like that to Rutgers University gym where it was now thousands of people Thousand. in the gym 
And and I'm before I'm going on, I got a little nervous. I was like, oh snap, this is real. <laughs> this is not no party. This is a concert. So, but what I did was I went into a locker room. This is a true story. I went into one of the locker rooms because it was in the gym. So it was they had a locker room. I went into the locker room by myself and I sat down on the bench by the by the things. I said, okay. All this is, quote unquote, I said, all this is, is just a bigger party. So all you got to do is just do what you normally do. And I went out on the stage and I couldn't, I, I couldn't stay on the stage five minutes. The girls was pulling me off the whole nine yards. The <laughs> or you, why, or you. <laughs> yeah, I know. But the, but the reason why I always, and then the other thing was this, and, and this is something that uh, I don't think I even share with everybody that the only time that I've ever really been secure and been totally free is when I'm on stage. That's the only time. Every everywhere else in my league, everybody I know else, that. you're like, yeah, right. Well, yeah. you know, like even like even in like if I walk in, like even if I'm with my crew and we walk into an event, you know, and we might the light might be shining, I I'll tend to I'll stand behind Diamond or you know, I, right. I let Hen Hen does most mm -hmm. of the talking for me. We go to places. Hen is, is the mouthpiece, you know what I mean? You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm totally at, at odds. I, I, I don't even yeah. do real life right, you know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know, the, the only place that I've ever been totally free doing, doing, is doing my thing, and I realized that too. So I figured that out as I was going, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't know what my thing was before, but then once I started, like I said, it kept growing and I kept seeing how, like you just said, I was like, damn, I'm pretty good at this, you know? And I, and, and I realized, you know, I knew what to do and I would make, I would think about something and do it and it would happen. And then I would, you know, work something out and I'd see that I did something else. And I was like, damn, I, I got like, you know, I'm like tunnel vision. I, I've got Com feeling like an athlete. Confidence. Right. Confidence. I started feeling like, yeah. I started feeling like an athlete, you know, when they could see the field, like a football player could game see the time, whole game time, game time. Yeah. And so <laughs> I got to that point where I was like, this is my thing, you know, because yeah. that, like I said, that was the only place, even to this day, that's the only place that I've yeah. ever really felt whole. So that's what it is. Yeah. Because I'm all, I'm so comfortable there. It, it, thank it, you it's, for, it's, I, th I thank you for answering that question because I, I always looked up, to, I still do, I look up to you and say, you gave confidence to all MCs around the world and even to Latin musicians too. And I was like, man, this guy could go up there, grab a mic and rock a crowd. I want to do that. Everybody wanted to be you, you know? So that's really gave oh, me the confidence. That, now you, know? you done done it. Now you done Oh done. man, I now stroked his done ego. Done it. So Tito, so so yes, tell me, sir. um I have a good question for you. How do you feel uh about how the music business have changed from the time when you're father was rocking to now to while you're rocking, you know, while you're doing your thing. Man, Hen, you know, I, I'm, I think about what my father would do if he were alive today. How would he react to the music industry? And there's a lot of great new music as far as the Latin music world. You know, there's a lot of great stuff coming up. The Bad Bunny, the Daddy Yankee, these guys are, I, I like the music. I think it's fantastic. And it's nice that they're starting to acknowledge you know, Tito Puente, Shelia Cruz, all the pioneers that really paved the way for them. You know, Puente and the Fania All-Stars and uh, Machito, Duke Ellington, Count Basie, they're the pioneers that really created the whole Latin music and jazz mambo sound, you know, from the 1950s and that whole collective era was just something that everybody needs, sh should acknowledge. And most of the artists are doing that. Jennifer Lopez, Mark Anthony, uh, Ricky Martin, they all had the doors open because of Puente, Celia Cruz, you know, they open up the doors for most of them. I think now, today, a lot of the younger artists that are coming up, they are putting their songs in. I just saw something um, uh, by Carol G, very popular uh, 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 performing artist in the Latin music world, number one on Billboard around the world. And she redid one of the Gloria Stefan songs, that conga tune, with yeah, a Meek mm -hmm. Mill. Uh, it was very, very nice. They're honoring, you know, the legends 
that really opened up the door for them. And if they continue on that path, you're getting a new generation of, of kids that are going to enjoy Latin music. As far as radio, uh, I really don't know. Uh, I think the internet stations really got it together when they played, you know, the music of my father and what's happening with, uh, with Latin music in the world today. Um, terrestrial radio too as well, the serious mm -hmm. exams of the world, right. you know, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. I, li I listen to stuff in other places. When, I'm on, when I don't really listen to local radio anymore, you know, I'm listening to stuff that's happening in Germany and, you know, in, uh, in Russia, and they play Latin music over there, they play mambo music over there, and then they have small little pockets and markets in the United States, in New York, La Mega, of course, they, they still play mm -hmm. some salsa music, my boy Alex Sensation. Uh, but I think the music industry is in a, and right now, the reggaeton and the trap music is what's really dominating right now. But every, you know, things change, man. And some things stay the same, like Wente music, like Sugar Hill music. It'll always be there. It's timeless music, and people will still come to the concerts. You know, right now, right. what we're doing, we're all sitting around because we need to be on the road. But we're all reflecting on how our music has really, you know, think about it. If this pandemic goes for another, what, another year, yeah. God forbid, more than that. Um, you'll know that you could still go back to that 1978, 79 hit and perform it in 2022, and people by the masses will come and see you. So that's yeah, a good yeah, one. Yeah, that's right. You that's know, right. The, the, at, right. at the at the at you know when uh, G was telling you about you were asking questions about your dad, and you know it 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 he turned into a little kid, man. It was it was beautiful. It was beautiful to watch. Like I watched your chest yeah. rise, man. Yeah, when you said something about your dad. That's a beautiful thing to have that much love and admiration for for your father, and and then to go on with your career and push it, you know, push it to where you've pushed it. And at fifty years old, you know, you've gone out, you've learned a lot of things, and seen the world. Yeah, I mean, I mean you, you, you know, all of it. I mean, yeah. how would you how would you say if your dad was here, what would you what would you share with him right now? What if if you could? I would share that uh, he's got a son that really loves him, appreciates him. My my world is engulfed with his presence all day, every day. I try to teach my kids his grand. He never met his grandkids. I got my son and my daughter, little Tito Puente Jr. Jr. The third. Hey! <laughs> hey, get, get back to school. <laughs> Coming up in here. Get your get your nose in that tablet. <laughs> did you did you tell him to stay off your drums? Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I told, see, the, here's the deal. Here's the deal with the Tito Puente Jr. household. All okay. I got is drumsticks and cowbells, right? I don't have timbales here, guys. My wife said, you get that shit out of the house, go put it in the studio. So I got a storage. <laughs> I got it in storage. I can't play. I don't even have yeah. a stereo system in my house. Nothing. <laughs> you know, you know, these are my yeah. earphones. That's it. Yeah. Listen, bro, yeah. oh, go yeah. get yeah, yourself. Go get yourself an SPD, a Roland SPD, and play yeah. the pads with the headphones on, bro. That's, uh, that's it. Only thing yeah. I, can, I, I can tell yeah. you, because at least you got all your samples and you can work. That's it. She keeps me in this little man cave. Yeah. I yeah. can't go out there. The kids own the house. She yeah. owns the house. Yeah. So, I'm yeah. just like my father. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to get back out on the road. Hey, I'm an unemployed musician. Anybody need a Timbal player? Come on. Yeah. 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 Come on. Come on. Please. Yeah, yeah. What, what's the name? What's what's the name? What's the name of that movie, man? It, you but y'all just. Ah, oh, she said not talking. <laughs> and Dama said, "Don't don't play my drums." And he don't was in there. Drums. He step, went in the room. Step brothers. Step brothers. Yeah. Step brothers. Step brothers. Step brothers. Yeah. 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 Said, don't play hey. my drums. Is yeah. that your wife? That was that was priceless. That, that was my priceless. wife just yelling at me right now. Thank you, Mrs. Fuentes. That's right. That's right. What's up, babe? She's from Brooklyn, man. She's from Brooklyn. Oh, for, Red Hood, yeah. for Red Hood Project. Yeah. Red Hood Project. Hey, hey. She, she's That's from Bushwick. Hey. Oh, Red Hood. <laughs> what? Oh, she oh. said. <laughs> I love her. She said, she said hurry up and stop talking you. shit. <laughs> I, love yeah. you, I love you. No, this is perfect. That was it. That, that was, was it. Look, that was perfect. Look, perfect. Come perfect. Come perfect. Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen. Let me tell you this right here, man. Let me tell you this right here now. I, I just want to say that this has been excitingly enjoyable. This has been incredible. And, and, and I want you to, everybody in your house, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, I want to let you know that everybody that comes on this show is 
uh, 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 given the ability to now be a member of the Sugar Hill Gang family. So, yeah. Joe Puente Jr., Man. you are you are Absolutely. now officially. Officially, we call we call all our family members Cuzzo. Yeah. You are now hey. Cuzzo. Ba baby, you are you <laughs> Wait, 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 my wife gotta hear this shit. <laughs> wait, wait. Let me let me speak. Let me see. Let me see. Wait, where's she at? Cuzzo. Okay. She's right here. She's right here okay. on camera, but go ahead. I will. Officially? I, uh, you're officially a member of the Sugar Hill Gang family. You are yes. family member. No doubt. You are yes. Cuzzo. You are baby. down. That's well, what's hey, up. hey, He's Chico, all we right down, now. hey. He's speaking out right now, y'all. <laughs> she said, I'm a geek. <laughs> hey, but Tito, Tito, we connected anyway because, you know, I, I, I was in the yeah. same space with your dad. So we connected anyhow. You follow what I'm saying? That was it yeah. right there. So yeah, now it's true. just official. That's all it is, man. It's official oh, my now. God, my, you know what I mean? Tito points yeah, and uh, my uh, father uh, uh, brought us together. So, yeah. And like, so like you I said, know. listen, you are officially a member of official. the Sugar Hill Gang family. So when they say when we say what's up, Cuzzo, oh you gotta friend. respond, Cuzzo. You guys can take him on the road. Wait, wait, what? <laughs> take, take you on the road, but you forgot me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, tell your what? Tell, hey, hey, tell your esposa. Muy fuego, muy fuego. That's Brooklyn. Yeah. That's She's fine. That's Brooklyn. You no, know, guys, maybe one day we could perform the. No, no, no. We're going to make it happen. We love it, man. Listen, we're going to make it happen. We're going to make it happen. Now that we're in the same space, it's very, now we're accessible. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and in between, and, and, and believe me, man, one of the things that you said, that's why everybody was nodding their heads, is one of the greatest joys that I have is that the reason why I'm even able to do what I do is because of the people that I'm surrounded with. These guys right here, them cats out there in Dubai, a dude out there in, in Austria, these guys make it possible for me to continue, and and Mike bless his heart. Uh, it, it it makes us possible to to go to these new levels. So things that are put into the space, believe me, my people, yes. <laughs> they're listening. So awesome. this is go it's gonna happen, man. So I want to say thank yeah, you, man. For sure. I don't want to keep you. I don't want to keep you. We could do this all day. Uh, uh, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, uh, I really want to say once again, thanks for coming on the show. This is the Sugar yes. Hill Gang podcast. Thanks, everybody, for listening to the show. We love you for listening to us. We love you for being down with us. I am your host, the Master G. I'm joined by my boys. Say what's up. Say good night, T-Dynasty. Good night, T-Dynasty. Say good night, hand dog. <laughs> good night, world. <laughs> Say good night, Tito. Good night, guys. I love Sugar Hill Gang, man. Cuzzo! Stay you safe know. out there, guys. Cuzzo! No you, doubt. Tell, Stay tell, safe, baby. Tell the fire I said... Good night, she mama. She's gonna make me do laundry right now. This <laughs> is the Sugar Hill Game Podcast. Peace, y'all. And we see. Oh. Oh. Ah. Ah. Ah.